ask God for forgiveness for stunting this healing process and getting in his way. And then invite God to take you back on this healing process. And this time you won't interrupt him. You won't stop him. You'll let him continue to prune you, to stretch you, to mold you until he put to who you're supposed to be on this earth. Welcome back to another episode of Amber and the Truth Podcast. My name is Amber, and what I do is expose the truth. The gospel truth, truth that is. Or, I just tell you all of my business and tell you how God is using me so he can help you. <sighs> I've had this podcast idea on my mind for weeks now. And the reason why I haven't did it is because of school. Not me being disobedient, but generally because of school and busyness and work. But if you're watching the vlogs, I have a stand. Whatever. If you're watching the vlogs, then you would be keeping up with my life and what's going on now. So I'm not even going to tell you. Watch the vlogs. You'll know where the vlogs are. Literally go to this channel and it will be showing right there. Amber's Diaries. But anyway, so... As you can see from the title of this episode, Emotional Healing, I have been going through this healing phase for the betterment of a year. And I, I don't really know how to feel about it. So let's just start. Look, I, I get on this channel, I get on this podcast, and I speak about this particular person a lot. And my growth is coming from how you hear me speak about this particular person because it sounded angry a lot. It sounded like I was pissed or I was done or I was just, you know, if you have a discernment, then you would you could kind of be like, oh, yeah, she's not completely over it. That's why she feels that way. Or that's, that's why she's talking like that. You're, you're correct. You've assessed correctly. Um, <laughs> it used to bother me. Kind of still does. I'm being honest. I'm healing that I would talk about this person a lot because I felt like I was giving him a lot of me. But throughout this healing process, I have learned I wasn't giving him anything. It's meant to go to the Lord, Jesus Christ. So, I would say two weeks ago, maybe three, three weeks ago, I watched the episode of House, which I'm re-watching House because it seems to be the only show where there's no witchcraft, a lot of sex scenes, and just blasphemy. Anyway, um, and there's this particular episode that kind of stirred something up in me. If I'm being honest, if I'm being real. And it had me have to deal with some set of emotions that I didn't expect to be revealed. God will do that. He will, he will use any and everything to reveal to you things you need to fix or heal from. Clearly. So, as I was just watching this show and these feelings and emotions were brought up, I, um begin to question myself at where I was in my healing stage from this situationship that I put myself in for the last decade. And um, I thought I was healed. Well, not healed. I thought I was, I thought I had forgiven this person. I thought because I wasn't angry, because I didn't have any ill will towards the person, that I wasn't upset that I had forgiven them God quickly showed me it was a no so I was talking to my sister in Christ call her my sis right and she was like she asked me a question and my answer to that question really made me realize where my heart was in this entire situation <sighs> she was like if he called you 
and asked you, like not even just asked you, wanted to give his life to Christ, right? And just wanted me to help him do that. How would I respond? And I sat there, right? And I was like, hmm. My last time speaking and talking about this person, I said I would never speak to him again, right? And I was like, oh, that's not a good response. My immediate response wasn't a good one because if someone wants to give their life to Christ, I need to be up and ready to do so, period. As a vessel, that's what I'm supposed to do, right? And I realized that I wasn't. And <laughs> why am I talking like this? But no, for I realized that I wasn't. And it made me go through a whole set of emotions for an entire week where I was like, okay, Lord, I thought I was, thought I was done. Like I thought we was nearing the end. Haven't spoken to him in a whole year. What is this feeling? What is this emotion? What's going on? And the Lord was like, you haven't forgiven him. And I said, Burr, what are you talking about? Yes, I did. Because remember the day? <laughs> I try to remind God of the things that I've done. Like he doesn't see everything. Um, and God was like, you haven't forgiven him. Because if he showed up in your face right now, What would you do? What would you say? If he text or if he called you, would you respond? Would you show him love? Agape. I was like, but Lord, you literally said he wasn't the one I was supposed to be with. Right. So what are you talking about right now? Speaking to this man again. And God had completely revealed to me my heart. It ain't like he wanted me to talk to him again. I don't, I don't think that's what this is about. I think it's the fact that my heart posture, the fact that I haven't fully, completely given, forgiven this man. And I was like, then what is, huh? Understanding that this came after my deliverance from the spirit of rejection. I have been rejected from birth by my own mother and father my entire life through multiple circumstances you know little instances big instances men family whatever my rejected my whole life and i had re i had got deliverance from that literal deliverance demon cast it out of me yes deliverance and um after that felt lighter felt freer you know what i'm saying I got the spirit of adoption, which is, you know what I'm saying? My father, I'm a daughter. You know what I'm saying? And um, I was like, okay, Lord, okay, we can, we can do this. And weeks after that, God had revealed this to me. I haven't forgiven him. And I was like, because he, out of every person in my life that had rejected me, his meant, his was heavy on me, if I'm being honest. His and my grandmother's, which... I've completely forgiven my grandmother and I, lo I love her and she's everything. And you know what I'm saying? Like it's my grandma, it's a family. But when a man you love does it, it's, it's something different. Like it's family is different, but so is romantic different. It's like they, they have, they're heavy, but they're both different. If y'all know what I'm talking about now. So, um, I was like, okay, cool. Like, Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And talking to my sister in Christ, we as we had went out one day and we spent the entire day like we, we, we met up. at Yeah, we spent the entire day together. And by the end of that night, I had come to the conclusion that a. A. <laughs> I still love him. Two. Follow me. There was nothing wrong with that. Three. I still have more healing to do. And I was like, okay. And it, and it frustrated me because I was like, when am I going to be done? When am I going to be done? I feel like he gets to have all these bits and pieces of me and he gets to go live his life and be happy and not think about me and not desire me or not love me. And I'm still loving him. Why? That's, that's not fair, God. 
And God was like, number one, you shut him out of your world. That means I had put up a wall the minute God said he wasn't the one. He wasn't going to be my husband. And I thought that wall was forgiving him. I shut him out of my life by A, saying I would never speak to him again, not knowing what God could do. Two, building up a wall so that he couldn't have access to me. Three, being irritated or what I call is a physical explanation point. There's a thing that happens in your body where you just like, it's almost like that, that vine sound or that TikTok sound where it's like, mm. It's like a physical explanation point. Like when I would see his name, when I would see his face or see, so oh, yeah, yeah, I had a bad when I would see somebody who looked like him. I would like double take like what? And that it, it just frustrated me because I thought I wasn't healing. And then God was like, no, you have known this man a third of your life. I met him as a teenager, bro. I am almost 30. And I expect to be completely over him, emotionally over him, and just over the entire situation within a year. And I was like, yeah, what are you, that is not, it's not unreasonable. <laughs> and, and, and God was like, the work that I want to do in you is deeper than that. Because if he was to ever come back and say anything to me, I need to be ready. Because it might just be for salvation. It might just be to pour into him or to prophesy to him or to lay hands. It might just be those things. And if I'm carrying this unforgiveness, I can't be used. Simple. And I'm like, okay, Lord, well, let's, let's do this. Let's go. Because you keep warning me about my husband, which is great. Awesome. And... Which I think I met, by the way. Never mind. He, I'm lying. Anyway, um, I, I truly want to be over this, but I don't want to hate this man. I don't want to have any animosity towards this man. I don't want to look at him and feel a physical explanation point. <laughs> I don't want to feel anything but agape love towards him to where I'm like, mm. like, truly love this man platonically. No strings, no hating, no broken pieces, no secret love, no lusting, nothing. I truly want to just love this man like I'm supposed to, like Christ says. And I gave it to God. And I went to the altar and I released it. And I was like, okay, Lord, so what are what, we're going to do this? What are we doing? And the Lord is doing some work. Hence why I'm here to have this conversation with you guys. So. That was a long intro, right? That was like 13 minutes. Okay, I'm sorry. But you're here to you're here to listen and you're here to watch, right? So let's just dive into it. So we're gonna talk about the seven stages of emotional healing. God led me to this because he wanted to reveal to me and tell me where I was at in the seven stages. I asked my sister in Christ. She told me that I was at the moving forward and the acceptance. That I was, because at the time when I was speaking to her, I had a hard time accepting the fact that we were really done. I'm going to be honest. We have never been done. We have never stopped talking. We have never cut communication indefinitely. It, we have always, one of us has always come back. And I just didn't believe it. I told the Lord. I was like, you got to be honest with the Lord. What are your relationship to grow and to flourish? Hiding from an all-knowing God makes no sense. <laughs> So I'm honest. I'd be like, Lord, I'm having a hard time accepting the fact that I will never speak to him again. And God was like, I never told you that. <laughs> who, who told you you would never speak to him again? I mean, Lord, but you said he wasn't it. I said he wasn't your husband. I never said you wouldn't speak again. <sighs> Look, he said, what am I what I'm doing is giving you time to heal. That's it. Giving you time to heal. I'm introducing a layer of healing like an onion that was prophesied to me that my healing will come like stages like an onion. Layers. It'll One layer of healing is done and God will reveal another. That one's done. God will reveal another. And that's clearly what this is. Um, <laughs> um, and 
I was like, okay. And so the seven stages of emotional healing, if you are watching this, great. If you're listening, go back and go back and ask God where you are. The first one is awareness. God makes you aware that you need healing. God has made me aware that I was hurt by him and that I needed to heal from that, that I needed to address it. Like I've always painted him as this wonderful golden boy who just never hurt me, who just didn't want me romantically. When I had to be honest with him, he did hurt. Being rejected by that man multiple times throughout my entire young adult life, teenage to, to my twenties, hurt. It hurt. And it caused me to re, uh, to hurt other people because hurt people hurt people, right? So me being hurt and rejected, I went out and did the same thing. Um, and God makes you aware. And God had to reveal to me, you need to forgive completely and then your healing will come to an end. And I'm like, okay, cool. Hmm, all right, did that. Doing that, actually. Then God, then acceptance. It's awareness. And then acceptance is the second one. You have to accept the truth. And you're now new reality with the truth. I had to accept that, number one, he wasn't it for me. I thought I did that. I mean, I did do that. I did it very quickly. It was almost like a weight off. It was almost like a, a stronghold was broken when I found out the truth. But accepting the fact that he would never come back or that he would never come back was what the thing I was just having a hard time accepting because I'm like, bro, what you mean we never going to speak again? You know, like everybody got, not everybody, but a lot of people have that one person they always run back to, right? And they can flirt with, chop it up with, smile, you know what I'm saying, do googly eyes and stuff with. And I had to dead that. <laughs> because <clears throat> me and him always had that. No matter if I was talking to somebody, with somebody, we always had that. That wasn't okay. And we ain't about to do that with my husband. I got a, I got a, a whole husband. No. So I had to accept the truth that what we had is for real gone. Like gone, gone. And if, if it's in the Lord's will, what we will have next is a friendship. Truly. Don't know if that's the Lord's will or not. I'm not praying about it. I'm just saying. God can literally do anything. So it might be, it might not. Don't know. But um, accept the fact of your new reality after, you, after God reveals this to you. Number three, which took a very, it took me a long time to go through this one. The third one is feeling the pain also known as long suffering. It's a process through God's healing. Feeling the pain and the hurt of all of that, bro. Oh my, I, there were so many nights I cried to Father. I cried to God and I was just like, this hurts. I don't want to feel this anymore. And he was like, that's just too bad. You keep digging. Not to plan. But <laughs> he, was, he would comfort me. I would ask for his comfort and he would give it to me because he cares about every single thing I care about. If I'm in pain and crying and crying out to my father, he comes every single time. And it kept getting better because at first I didn't want to cry because I felt like I was giving the man my tears. I felt like he was getting a piece of me. And God was like, no, you're giving it to me so I can exchange it for my peace and comfort. And I was like, oh, okay, well, boo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. Mm. So I was crying, you know, giving God. And that wasn't, I didn't do that. I haven't cried over this man in, in, a, in over a year, so we're good. But that that was the painful part, a painful part, right? And so then we're going to go to uh, uh, grieving. Let go and let God. That's the fourth stage. You feel the pain. It hurt initially. And then you're grieving. And again, it takes, that's, I feel like that's a really long stage because you have to, Number one, you have to accept the reality and then you're feeling the pain of that reality. And then you have to let go like you have to let God do what he want to do. God has better for me, even though we be thinking we got the better. We don't. He do all the time. He has the better and we have to let him give us the better. The big teddy bear behind his backpack, backpack behind his back. He want to give us, but we too busy holding on to the little one. So let go and let God let go. And let God, let it go. 
let it go now. It's not yours. Let it go. It's not yours. It's not. And the quicker you get that through your head, the quicker you get through this one, this stage. Because after you're finished grieving and you let go and you let God, there's a part of you, especially when you're in the world, where you want to get angry, where you like, okay, well, I'm over there. I don't care no more. There's this girl at work. She's a homie. And she recently found out her dude was cheating on her. Bruh, and she was telling everybody <laughs> that she didn't care. And I can clearly see it on her face that she cares, right? But she's like, I don't care about none of that. And I don't give, you know, cussing and stuff like that. You know, I try, I try to mentor her. I really try to talk to her and stuff like that. Because she reminds me of younger. She really reminds me of young Amber. She really does. Everything about her. I just be looking at her like, bro, that used to be me. <laughs> she good. She like, she real deal. You know, she funny, but she don't play that. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, she reminds me of young me. And she's just like, she would... Anybody she could talk to, she would tell a story to, and they'd be like, I don't give about him, I don't care, da da da. And I'm just looking at her like, girl, you care so much. <laughs> you care a lot, actually. And a lot of that bitterness and animosity will stay if you don't forgive. You will never truly heal until you forgive. Nothing in your life can switch and change until you forgive. Me forgiving my grandma changed the trajectory of our relationship. It's like the minute I did the glory that God has over me, the anointing or the favor just suddenly opened up a way to her. I don't know how to explain it. It's like she's kinder. She's more loving. She wants hugs. She wants prayer. Never seen this in my entire life. Until the last six months of me truly forgiving her, God has opened up like it's just this wild relationship that we have now that we did not have six seven months ago so it's like wow forgiveness will will do, forgiveness is the key to properly healing you will not heal properly without it so forgiveness oh i'm skipping i'm skipping i'm skipping i'm skipping my ball so awareness God makes sure you need to heal and acceptance you have to accept the truth in your new reality with the truth feeling the pain long suffering grieving let go and let god the next one is growth i'm sorry i skipped a part growth growth and knowledge and peace with god's truth so once you you've let go and you've given it to god you're going to grow in a particular way where it's like okay mm. and 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 it's true and it's true like it is it's true like how in the world when people are healing they will cut their hair or they will get a tattoo or they get a new job or they move or they change something right when you're healing with God, he will switch your focus. The minute God revealed to me he wasn't it, I, had, I got a job and I went to school. Immediately got busy. And it took a lot of weight off of the grieving. It did. Because I, was, I wasn't, like, I was still grieving, but my focus was on my job in school and assignments and stuff like that. So I didn't have time to be like woe is me and I'm so sad and I miss it. like you know and I grew a lot within that time spiritually physically mentally all of it just grew and forgiveness which is the next one which is truly forgive them then you can move on this was the part that I didn't know that I didn't do I spent this whole year and some change busy because working school and ministry and church I didn't realize I hadn't forgiven him. I just threw up a wall and went to work. I had, for, I had, I wasn't no, I wasn't angry anymore. But I had to forgive him, and I did. Once God revealed it to me a few weeks ago, that's the first thing I do when God revealed to me anything. I'm like, okay, Father, let's go, let's attack it, because I don't want to, um, I don't want to get complacent in my relationship with God. You know, keep any, have anything between us. Um, and now, number seven, I'm in the moving forward, walking in God's divine purpose. I am now walking in the purpose of, 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 of God. Like I've been walking in the purpose and doing everything, but now it's like emotionally I am. <laughs> like the last year of my life was the greatest year ever. Like last year, crazy. And we only four months into this month, this year, and this year about to top it on God it is. I don't swear. 
on my father. What I do is 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 tell y'all what he's doing, and I promise you on him this gonna be a great year, despite what I go through this year. Great year, better year, and I am walking in his divine purpose right now, and. I can tell you how my attitude towards this man has shifted since the forgiveness. I unblocked him. I've even tried to look for him on social media. I couldn't find him. I think he might either block me or deleted his stuff. Um, I wasn't going to like reach out or anything. I didn't want to bother him or intervene with my healing. But I just wanted to know if he was okay. And I guess I'm going to have to be okay with not knowing that. But one thing I did want to, um, did want to tell y'all or, or to reveal, like, he now has access to me. So if he wanted to, he could. And a year ago, probably, I probably said it in the vlogs many times. I would have been like, oh, I'm never speaking to him again. That's changed. If he was to ever say anything else, say anything to me this year, Period. At this point in time in my life, he would get a response, a proper one. If he was to hit on me, a proper one. Or if he was to come at me correct, platonically, proper one. If he wanted to be friends, we could do that. If he wanted to be platonic, if he wanted to just reach out every now and then, we could do that. There would be nothing stopping me. Because at that point, I, would, I don't think God lets people in my life without a reason. And he doesn't. There's not a single person in my life that don't have a purpose. Either I'm doing something for them or they're doing something for me or vice versa. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's we both giving and taking in the relationship. So I believe if he if God allowed him back into my life, it would be to minister. Simple. God will flip it like that. We met in sin. And <laughs> for our relationship to get to a point to where it's now. Oh, he wants salvation. Oh, he wants Jesus. Let's go. Let's let's meet Jesus. I know how to usher in the presence of the Lord. I know how to bring him in here. I don't need music to do that. I can pray. Ooh, I can pray. I can pray his presence in. Just like that. Invite him. Don't make room. He is the room. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. So, right now, if you're driving, if you're listening, if you're watching, I'm going to go through the, lab, the seven stages. The reason why it's probably seven. It's not, it's not a coincidence that it's seven stages. Completion. Awareness, acceptance, feeling the pain, grieving, growth, forgiveness, and moving on. Take the time right now to ask the Lord, which stage are you in your emotional healing? And then to ask God for forgiveness. If you aren't done, <laughs> ask God for forgiveness for stunting this healing process and getting in his way. And then invite God to take you back on this healing process. And this time you won't interrupt him. You won't stop him. You'll let him continue to prune you, to stretch you, to mold you until he put to who you're supposed to be on this earth. And at the end, shift your focus to what God has in front of you and let the past be the past. Don't bring it back up. Don't dwell on it. You gonna have you in this healing stage. All of those things are okay to do. But once you're in the moving forward stage, the enemy is going to try to bring it back up. He's going to try to make you think about the past or make you dwell on it. Or don't you miss this? Or he was this and she was that. that. Let the past be the past. It's over with. It's done for. There's no need to dwell on it. Our God is the God of the going forward. Not moving backward. So, I hope this blessed you. I hope you use this to actually heal. To grow closer to God. And to remember that forgiveness, I mean to remember that time doesn't heal all wounds. Forgiveness does. And when you do that, when you do that, you're in God's hands. You're good. You're good standing. And you never be surprised. God may use that person you need to forgive for you to minister to them. Our Father works in mysterious ways, man. 
But I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for staying tuned. Thank you guys for listening. Appreciate the support. Follow me on Amber and the Truth vlog channel, TikTok, Instagram, Amber and the Truth Ministries, Facebook, all of these things in the description below. And as always, if you're looking at me, I will see you and you will see me next time. If you're listening to me, you will hear me, but I won't hear you next time. Peace.